So, Coach, I guess first off, Syracuse is a team you guys have faced a lot recently, four times in the last three years. You've uh, split the series two and two. What do you got? What do you expect to see from that team, and what what does that program bring every time you guys play? Yeah, I think Syracuse is is an unreal program. We have a storied history uh, against them playing games at the Final Four, having tight games in the regular season. They're always well coached. Um, back in the day when Lisa Miller was the coach, uh, to Gary Gate, and now to Kayla Trainer, they just have a, you know, a great hitch history of, you know, bringing unbelievable talent and really competing at the highest level. So it's really a privilege to be able to play them. We're so excited that um, we have this matchup, we have this rivalry, and you know, this is what it's all about, to being able to play games like this on a regular basis and and uh, should be a lot of fun, hopefully exciting for the fans. And of course they have Emma Ward, a senior attacker. What makes her such a special player and so difficult to defend? Yeah, I mean, she is a phenomenal talent, uh, skill-wise, you know, second to none. She, she can dodge and feed just equally as well, um, and she is really, really powerful, right? Um, she can, can dodge by people. Her shot is, is like a cannon. So I think, you know, from, from her perspective, she really loves the game. She's really creative too. So a lot of respect for her and, um, should be a, a challenging, um, matchup, but you know, she's not their only player. They have so many great players across the board. And so we're going to have to play great team defense. Coach, last year coming into this time, there were a couple of question marks about how the team would adjust. Is he coming back from injury? Mm -hmm. Molly making the leap from D3, Madison Taylor starting the first game. Mm -hmm. But now some of those question marks are answered. So how are you feeling about this game this year compared to where you were last year? I feel the same way. I mean, I think, you know, you get really excited for the matchup, the rivalry. Um, it's the beginning of the season for both teams, so we're neither of us are going to, you know, have our, our uh, perfect team. You know, we're always going to make mistakes and, you know, learn from them. So we're just going to go out there and have some fun, compete as hard as we can, and see where it takes us. Uh, obviously, this is a new team this year, and we're still forming who we are. Um, we have a long way to go, so we're just excited to be able to play someone else. And eight of your nine non-conference opponents this season made the tournament, with the ninth being Colorado, a team that very well could make their first tournament since 2019. How important is it for you guys to have such a challenging non-conference schedule as you head into conference play later on in the season? I just have the philosophy, if you want to be the best, you have to play the best. And so the more we're challenged during the regular season, hopefully if we do well, that'll put us in a position to, you know, have confidence going into the postseason. So, um, you know, I, I just truly believe that challenges are, are good and on the field and, and off the field as well. And Coach, you mentioned to be the best, you got to play the best. This year, that's you guys coming in. How is the, has the mentality shifted at all from the hunters to the hunted, or how are you guys going into this now as the defending champions? I think we're just going into this opportunity being grateful for it, um, you know, excited for the matchup, excited to be able to play lacrosse in our facility, um, uh, you know, against the in front of a sold out crowd. Um, so that's kind of where our head is at. Uh, we know that. Uh, you know, teams are going to give their best effort against us. We've talked about that as a group, but um, really the, the focus was on us last year and it continues to be on us. And Coach, uh, obviously Sammy White this fall uh, was rehabbing a bit of an injury. She's, uh, she's back, she played against Stanford, of course. Uh, what are you expecting to see from her in her junior season, especially building off of that national championship run where she was so vital to your guys' success? Yeah, I think she got a lot of confidence last year. Um, you know, we moved her around a little bit positionally, and, and I think that towards the middle to the end of the season, she gained a ton of confidence. So I'm just really excited to see the, the defense as a whole. Um, Sammy's a big part of that, but I think we have great defenders across the board. And so I'm, I'm excited to see, you know, us put on a show in terms of 
the, the work that we've put in to see where we're at. This will give us a barometer of, you know, what we need to work on and where we need to get better. Obviously, we had the scrimmage, but I think it's a little bit different than playing a regular season game. And so we want to, you know, we want to test ourselves and why, why not do it against a, a great program like Syracuse. And Leah Holmes saw a lot, a lot of action in that Stanford scrimmage. Uh, last year with Haley Radigan coming into the program, she didn't uh, play as much, but it seems like she might step into much more of an elevated role again this year. What have you seen from her in the build-up to this year, and uh, how's her confidence level looking? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, Leah really, you know, took the off season. She really worked on her her mindset and her mental approach to the game, and. Um, it's, it's really cool to see the confidence that she's gained uh, throughout the fall up until now. And, you know, we're hoping that she can kind of continue that path. I think she is just excited about every day she gets to play the game. And she's trying to be creative, which I think is an asset of hers. And so we're just trying to embrace her in, in that role and, um, you know, continuing to help her develop, just like we help all, all the players on the team develop. And then, Coach, a lot of new faces coming in from various different places. You've got transfers, you've got field hockey players coming in, you've got a lot of good first years. Uh, how are you guys planning to fully integrate into the team, and especially given the gauntlet you guys have in the non-conference, how are you expecting that process to go? Yeah, I think with new players, you know, it's going to be a process. Um, it, it's never perfect, and it's never like it is in the beginning. It's not where it is in the end. So it's always going to be a process. And, you know, as I said before, we're trying to figure out who we are and see where people fit in and, and, um, and go from there. So we're excited for, you know, just the new chemistry that they bring to the unit and to see how we shape up as a group. And how do you balance, uh, of course, playing some grad transfers, playing some of those older veterans with getting some of the younger players experience? Because last season, in terms of the first years, we had, of course, Madison Taylor, who was basically all American, all world, if you will. Uh, and, uh, and you had uh, Lucy Monroe also getting some minutes in the midfield. But uh, not as many first years got that much action. Of course, um, uh, Fran Argentier got some as well. But uh, how do you really balance the playing your veterans with getting the younger players some experience? Well, I think that, you know, it's really truly about development and people develop at different stages. So we're just really focusing in on the individual and as a group, we're focusing in on developing. And um, we kind of have to gauge where people are at. And, you know, that can be a hard thing when you, you know, you have a lot of players. But um, our main goal every week is to make sure each individual gets a lot better. Um, and then on game day, we'll see where we're at. So um, that's really our goal. And, and we want to, through that process, become a cohesive unit. Of course, you've had the opportunity to coach a lot of your players with the U20 training team. How, how have you enjoyed that experience, and uh, what have you learned about some of your younger players there? Yeah, I think that's been an awesome opportunity for them to, uh, and, and the other players that are on the team. Um, you know, it's a lot of first years or sophomores. Um, at the collegiate level and even some high school players, it's a great opportunity for them to test themselves um, and really gain some confidence. And I hope to see that those players on our squad go to their colleges and, and do great things. Um, so we'll see how it, it develops, but it's definitely been a great experience for our Northwestern kids that are on the squad. And then we've talked a little bit about the rivalry with Syracuse, as Jake mentioned, four games in the last three years. Last year, of course, this team was the only team to beat you guys. Mm -hmm. What sort of role has that played in the lead up to this game? Like well, any measure of revenge? Um, I mean, I don't know necessarily think we're focused on revenge, but again, as I said, it's a, it's a great rivalry. No matter what, we know it's going to be a great game. And, you know, I think that um, – the, the amount that we grew from the game last year to the end of the season was such a huge amount. So, you know, we're just really looking forward to seeing where we're at and then hopefully growing a lot from there. We're not too, you know, hyped on 
revenge factors or things of that sort. We know that Syracuse is a great program and they're going to bring their best effort every time they're out against us. And Coach, of course, there's a lot you can learn about your team in fall ball and the build up to the season, but how much do you have left to learn about what your group has to offer uh, in these opening games this year? I mean, a lot to learn. Uh, there's always so much learning, and that's the fun part. You know, you're learning who you are, you're learning who you can become, and uh, really just challenging yourself along the way. So uh, that, that is really what we do throughout the season. It's the transformation, um, and hopefully we can have a lot of fun while we're doing it. So Molly, you get to play some, uh, a competitive game uh, on Saturday. How are you feeling? Feeling great, feeling excited. Uh, yeah, it's a great opportunity. And to be able to be back for your sixth year of college lacrosse, um, what's, that ex what's that experience been like thus far and what are you most looking forward to? Uh, you know, I think it's really just a gift to get to be back and get to keep playing this amazing game with these amazing people. And so in terms of what I'm looking forward to, it's just continuing to embrace that and uh, have fun every single day that I'm uh, out on the turf with them. Last year, Syracuse, your first game at D1 Cross. Now, though, you've got a full year under your belt. How are you feeling mentally now compared to last year? Uh, you know, I definitely think that last year's game against Syracuse was, I had a lot of emotions going into that and not necessarily good ones. Um, I think I'm really excited and I think I'm really confident in the people that I have around me. Um, and we all know each other and love each other even more than last year. Um, so yeah, I think just using this year as a great opportunity to kind of rewrite the script. And of course, Syracuse has very dynamic attack as you saw last year, but it's a few different pieces now. Uh, what, have, what have you noticed from them in preparation for this game? And uh, how are you guys preparing to kind of slow down perhaps uh, a player like Emma Ward? Yeah, uh, they're a great team. They have, like you said, some great players. Emma Ward is a phenomenal lacrosse player. Um, you know, I think it's just about going out there, playing our defense, trusting each other, sticking to the plan. Um, you know, the best defense we can play is Northwestern lacrosse, so. And how's your defensive chemistry at this juncture? It's great. I mean, it's phenomenal to get to take the field again with these girls, most of whom were the same unit that were out um, on the field last year. It's really great. There are, we're best friends. Um, we work together on and off the field. and. Uh, yeah, it's really exciting. And, uh, you mentioned trying to maybe rewrite the script a little bit this year. Last year the script was, you know, Northwestern's trying to finally climb back on the mountaintop. Now that you guys have, what's the mentality this year now that you're defending the crown instead of going for it? We're not defending anything. Um, you know, next year, this year is a new year. We're just going for it. We're attacking it. Same kind of thing. I think, you know, everyone still doesn't feel like we're, like, the team um, and we just want to play our game and have fun doing it um, and I think what happened last year was last year and so we don't say we're defending anything we say we're attacking this year. And obviously with you coming in last year as a grad transfer and adjustment period for you now you have two, two new grad transfers joining the team how have you really helped them um, uh, really adjust and uh, kind of adapt to the, to the new team environment and how have you noticed them really mesh with uh, your old team, with all your teammates? Yeah, so our three new grad transfers this year, Aaliyah, Lindsay, and um, Mary, Aaliyah coming from Northwestern field hockey, they've been phenomenal to have, you know, just getting some new energy into the group, both on and off the field. They're all great people. Um, speaking defensively, I love having Aaliyah out there. She brings a different perspective to, you know, how to approach different defensive situations. and. You know, she's been like a sponge, kind of just like absorbing our new, our, uh, uh, our defense, which is new to her. Um, so that's been really fun on attack. You know, Lindsay's just been phenomenal. Um, she's, she has a lot of firepower, and you can see that from her time at Richmond, too. Um, and it's great to see her carrying that over. And also Mary has just been really crafty and brought a different look to the team. So that's been really great as well. And she's, you know, a great teammate. Oh, and taking shots against, uh, of course, this uh, attacking unit with uh, perhaps the most firepower in the nation. What have you seen from uh, your starting attack uh, thus far in practice, and what are you expecting from them as the season begins? 
I think there is no one better than us. I mean, I'm sure every team in the country thinks that, but um, I feel very, very lucky to get to see shots from Izzy, Aaron, Dylan, Maddie, everyone. Um, it's been really great, um, and they seem to be working together really well. Um, you know, they're going to get goals. They're going to miss shots. It's, it's, it's lacrosse. So um, I'm excited to see them work together. And you mentioned that the defense especially is bringing back a lot of the same pieces that you guys had last year and also adding some, you mentioned Aaliyah as well. How are you guys planning on combining both the continuity from last year, keeping that alive, while still integrating all the new talent you have? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think everything that we started to build last year, like that's just sort of, you know, the first layer. Um, and just like building anything, you just continue to add on. And I think trying to focus on being present in the moment and enjoying what we have here and today, I think that's crucial. If we focus too much on the past or if we ignore everything that we created last year, then we'll find ourselves in trouble. So I think just focusing you know, on each other and uh, on continuing to just build that love and family. And of course you guys are playing in front of a sold out crowd this Saturday. What kind of energy are you expecting inside of Ryan Fieldhouse this weekend? I hope there's a lot of great energy. Um, I know I'll be out there celebrating my teammates, celebrating all the little wins. Um, so yeah, I'm hoping that we can get a lot of Cats fans, but at the end of the day, I hope that the energy comes from the field and you know we can just love each other and cheer each other on and support one another. So Sammy, obviously you rehabbed an injury during the uh, fall ball and into mm -hmm. the winter. What was that rehab process like, and how excited are you to be back playing competitive across the spring? Yeah, it was definitely very difficult. Um, I think that's the like most like injury that I've ever had, like the longest substantial one. Um, so I really like went back home, cranked out some like really hard rehab, like three times a day. Um, really like grinded to get back um, and I just think every time I get to step on the field I'm just really happy to be back. Not playing in the fall was really hard. I've always like wanted to be out there and watching your team doing what you wish you could be doing is very difficult and so I'm just really happy to be back and being able to play and I'm really excited to kick off the season and just be healthy. And what have you noticed in terms of your team's defensive chemistry uh, at this early juncture heading into your first game of the season? Yeah, I think we are returning a lot of people from last year, so I think that really helps with our chemistry. I think we're able to really um, mesh well together coming right out of like the beginning of the season, which I think kind of took us a little bit of time last year. So I'm really excited that we kind of all have already worked with each other and we're just really like keeping up that communication and just really like having each other's back on defense. Yeah, you mentioned the defense meshing together and it seemed to do that really well last year, mm -hmm. especially in the postseason. But as you mentioned, it did take some time mm -hmm. to get to that point. How are you guys trying to make sure it gets to the point where that meshing comes earlier in the season? Yeah, I think just knowing what we did last year and knowing how well it worked, um, just really bringing that into the beginning of the season and making sure that we're keeping up that communication um, we're doing extra work if we need to. We're watching film as a group. We're really making sure that we know like what our weaknesses are and like if we're getting down like what we need to do and what our team, our defense needs to do to like pick us up to get us our head back in the game. And of course, last year when you guys played Syracuse, you were playing in the midfield. Mm -hmm. so now that uh, you'll be lining back up in, in defense, what's your mentality like and what are you expecting for Saturday's game? Yeah, I'm just really excited to. Um, not have to bounce back. Um, I'm really happy that I'm starting in the defense. Um, I love playing defense. It's so fun and I think the girls that are on that defense are just so fun to play with. Um, so I'm just really excited to be able to play with them and start there and not have to like kick it up a notch as the time goes on but we're starting, we're ready to play, we're there. I'm just really excited to play against some really good competition and just get the season started. And you mentioned that really good competition. Of course, they have a dynamic attacker like Emma Ward. What have you seen from her playing against her in previous years? And uh, what, t what type of attention needs to be paid to a, an, an attacker of that ability? Yeah, I think she's a great feeder. So I think just making sure that we get on her hands and don't give her the ability to make those um, feeds is really important. And I think also just being tight on the cutters too, because they're a really good t cutting team. They're really able to move the ball quickly. So I just think being on their hands, being ready, and also being tight on those cutters is really important.
And you mentioned using last year as an example of what you guys need to do this year. How have you guys been using last year, like winning, winning it all finally for the first time since 2012? Have you guys been using that as motivation at all, or is it more just flush it, focus on this year? Yeah, I think we're not really trying to think about last year. I think it's a new year, it's a new team, and we can't really like live in the past, the past, the past. We can use it to help us move forward, but we're trying really not to focus too much on what happened last year because it's a whole new year. Like Everyone's gunning to get us, but at the same time, we're gunning to get everyone. Um, we're not trying to be like, oh, we're the top spot, we're the reigning champs. We're really trying to be like, we're still the underdogs. People still don't want us to succeed. Like We're going to come out the way we need to play. We're not worrying about how anyone else is playing against us. And coming off the national championship game where you were the game's MVP, uh, obviously you peaked at quite a <laughs> time last season. How do you make sure that you not only maintain that level, but perhaps add on to your ability uh, as, as this season progresses? Yeah. Um, I mean, I have really high goals and expectations for myself, and I just try and be the best defender, person, player, teammate every time I step out on that field. Um, so I think as exciting as it was to have all of those accomplishments last year, I think that it doesn't really matter. I think I'm trying to go above and beyond next year. I'm not really worrying about what I was last year, what preseason I'm getting. Like, I want to be the best that I can be, and I'm just pushing myself to be that, and I'm not really worrying about what happened last year, um, even though I know I can exceed those expectations. And what are some of those individual goals you have for yourself? <laughs> um, I would like to be um, in the top five Touraton. I think that would be really cool, especially Izzy and Aaron both being in it last year, um, and there was no defender in it, so I think that's a goal that I really am trying to accomplish. Um, obviously, it's really hard to be a defender in that sort of realm, um, but I think that I'm able to do it and I just have to keep pushing myself and I play against the best attackers every day. Um, so just keeping myself against those players and making sure that I'm working 110% when I'm going against them, I think will really help me accomplish that. And the defender has never won the Tawara time. Yeah. What makes you think that you could be the first to do so? Um, I think that I do a lot over the field, oh, like all around the field, which I think really helps. Um, I'm not just a defender, I'm on the circle, I'm able to go in the transition, I even score a couple of times. Um, but I think just really being focused and um, I don't know if I necessarily will be able to win it. And like, I think that's a really hard expectation for myself, at least this year, maybe next year when um, a lot of like the grad attackers are gone. But I think um, just pushing myself and not really worrying about what any other defender is doing because like, they're going to do what they're going to do and they're probably trying to accomplish a similar goal the same way. Um, but I think, like I said, just pushing myself every day in practice and just having that in the back of my mind, like I'm trying to do this, but also remembering why I'm playing and how like inspiring the younger generation and allowing them that they can accomplish their dreams that they want to do, but also playing for the other girls on my team because especially the ones that maybe not aren't getting to play or whatever the case is, but playing for every other girl on my um, team is just really important and pushing me to strive to be my best. And you mentioned watching the team during, um, from the sidelines uh, during fall ball. Mm -hmm. what did, you learn, did you learn anything about yourself as a, as a player watching, watching from the side? Because uh, I know you do coach in the summers, but mm -hmm. uh, was there, did you gain sort of a new, new perspective uh, watch, watching as you were rehabbing your injury? Yeah, I think it was really easy to see, like, what was happening. And I think that I almost tried to take on a role of trying to help the defense while I was far away because it's a lot easier to see if someone's oversliding, if someone's not communicating from the sideline, which isn't necessarily as easy to do on the field. So I'm really trying to take like a leadership role, making sure I'm communicating every time the ball comes on to our end, which is something that I kind of lacked a little bit last year. I kind of focused more on myself. So this year I'm trying to more be like a vocal leader out there because I know that I am a leader out there, but just making sure that I'm trying to help everyone around me while also helping myself is going to help the team in general. And eight of your nine non-conference opponents made the NCAA tournament last year, and your ninth uh, being Colorado, a team that very well could make the tournament again this year for the first time since 2019. How important is it for you guys to really challenge yourselves against these top teams uh, to really build that resume and really build sort of some, some sort of character before, uh, before the conference schedule begins? Yeah, I think you have to play the best to be the best. Um, so I really feel like 
making sure that we're getting these outside competitions. Obviously, we play really hard um, in conference schedule as well, but I think playing out of, out of conference, really hard teams in the ACC and all of those different um, conferences really helps us work on things and also play the best of the best, which really helps one, our resume, but also when it comes into tournament, tournament time, like we've already seen them. We already know what they like to do. We already have that in the back pocket. And if we lose to them, like who cares? So what? Like it's really hard to go undefeated in a whole season. So I don't think there's an expectation of us going undefeated the whole season. I think we're just going to go out, play how we play every single game. And, you know, if they are our top team, like who cares? We're still going to play the same way we'd played them versus an uh, unranked team. And then you talked a little bit about individual expectations, but for the team as a whole, you mentioned that, you know, it's a new team, a lot of new faces coming in, whether they're first years or coming on from the field hockey mm -hmm. side or even coming in as grad transfers. How have they sort of helped build the mentality of this team with a different experience considering they weren't on the squad last year? Yeah, I think they just bring um, different kind of experiences. Obviously, like field hockey made it pretty far this year, so they bring that sort of like competitive nature, I think. The freshmen coming in, um, they're really bringing this like competitive, aggressive um, kind of mentality to practice. I think they're trying to get better every day. They're fighting for spots. People are also who were on the team last year are fighting for spots. I think that makes just really friendly competition at practice, um, which just makes it overall more fun to play and just um, really brings that like competitive attitude every single day to practice. And you mentioned practice, like you talked about how you get to go against the best of the best. Mm -hmm. Molly mentioned that too. How do you think it helps the team that both the offense and the defense are consistently going up against some of the top players in the nation, even just on the practice field? Yeah, it's like undescribable. I think we really are so lucky that we're able to have that. Um, it's really nice that we're able to go and scout and have people play the roles of people so well that it's like we kind of already played it when we get into the game. So we don't have like this unfamiliarity when we're going into the game. I think we're really able to be more consistent um, and just playing against some of the best attackers just makes me feel confident when I go into my matchups in the game. And I'm like, okay, well, if I can cover the people in practice, then I can definitely cover these girls in the game. So it's like just a really big like mentality sort of thing. That's all we got. Yeah. Thank you cool. So much. Thank you.